but I cut as far back as I could and uh, that's the way it wound up. That's all that's left. Doctor says one more centimeter back and you'd be using a pee bag for the rest of your life. I wish I had done it 30 years sooner. When I cut the thing off, it was like 100,000 tons of hate and animosity towards myself was all of a sudden just lifted off my shoulders. Man, I could fly. I was, I was light. I was happy. It was the first time in my life I loved myself. I look in the mirror in the morning and I say, Linda, I love you. God, it was such a wonderful feeling. Linda couldn't do anything more to hurt herself. So somewhere she had the wherewithal to file a lawsuit against these people. And that's how it came to the court's attention to start with. And in fact, as we worked through the process, one of the things she continually insisted upon was a policy. And she wanted it published. There's an established medical policy explicitly for transsexuals in Idaho now. And any girl that goes there knows that, should know that. The thing to the average taxpayer, you know, the bottom line to them is for what, maybe $20 a month, they could have provided Linda with generic hormones and instead we as taxpayers have paid for two extremely expensive visits to the emergency room. I think in the prison's mind that this was sort of a domino problem. If we let the inmates call the shots, we'll be out of control. So we don't want to let an inmate call a shot. And the justification is, well, the next thing she'll want is sexual reassignment surgery, so we aren't going to give her hormones. It's just hype. It's not, it doesn't really get at the issue. The issue is really, can a prison system say, we don't like this group of people, so we're not going to give them medical care? tell me that I was fighting an uphill battle, that they didn't think I could win because Virginia is a conservative state. The settlement imposed a very large new obligation on the Department of Corrections to provide a kind of care that it had no history of providing. I knew how much it meant to her, and I also thought that it was a wonderful breakthrough. I think that by me being incarcerated this time was for a purpose or reason, because now other transsexuals will have the benefit of receiving treatment without having to go through the pain and suffering that I went through, and that what kept me motivated to keep going, and it worked. September 21 of 2004. I fantasized about being out here in the wide open spaces for the seven years that I was down. I lasted six days this time on a rig and they run me off and traded me in for an old boy that had two months experience on a rig. And I've called all kinds of drillers and whatnot to get like 300 plus rigs drilling in this area. And as soon as I say my name is Linda, they hang up on me. It was like zero degrees or 10 below or 20 below when I was out here, so. I would get out of here in the morning, I have my coffee and whatnot, I'd go over there and have myself a donut or something like that. I got out of the dumpster. I'd spend the rest of the day and the night in my little shack. Thank you. 
too bad, and you? Pretty good. I bought a leather choker from you yesterday. There's your receipt. And you're supposed to snap. Okay, let me see. I think I found one. Does it work? All right. We have a winner. I'll just let you switch it right over. I'm out of here. I'll be in L.A. tomorrow. Really? I'll be there at 11.30 tomorrow night. Get off the bus, go down the street, start pedaling my flesh for sex. I'm going down to L.A. to work as a hooker because Wyoming has blackballed me out of their old fields. After 47 years, I'm finally being forced into prostitution. Transmit it as promptly as possible so that uh, the parole authorities can review your matter. Thank you. Council, thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much. Okay. If you get this message, if there's any kind of way that you can try to um, call social services or the courthouse to find out when am I getting released, please do so because I'm in here and I'm very anxious to get home. Hopefully, I'll see you soon, okay? Bye. I got off from the Essex County Jail, and I feel really great. Like, when I walked down the um, path to just freedom, it was like, oh, my God, like, it just feels unreal because, you know, you've been in there for so long and those bars and the doors and the cells and, and you know that you're on the street, you're free. <laughs> I want a nice house, something like this. You see, like, how the nice houses look. So peaceful, so nice, you know. That's what I would like in the future. We knew she had nowhere to go. So we... Actually, we moved to a two big apartment because we knew Yolanda was coming home. We had a one comfortable bedroom, <laughs> and we, uh, we just recently got a two bedroom right before she came home. My friends Jamie and Dee took me in once I got out from jail, and they allowed me to stay there with them and live a productive life. We decided to do it, and trust me, it's not easy. It's not. I mean, I'm going to be there for you know, but it's not easy. She got dreams. She wanted a beauty parlor. She wanted to own her own salon. You want to get accepted and be treated like a woman. You have to do womanly things. You gotta, you know, you, you gotta work. You have to do for yourself. You have to start at step one. You know, you, this stuff is just not gonna come to you. This exact corner here is the corner I used to stand on. This whole block here, this whole area, I used to work these corners when I was about 13 or 14. I used to work this area, you know. I can go through all the flashbacks of being out here, having to risk myself and go through these parking lots and do things that I really didn't deserve to do. Some guys would know. A mix of guys that didn't know, guys that knew, some that just didn't care, some didn't, some didn't even want to know. You know, you get in, you get, you get your 50 or $60 for a blowjob, and you go on your way. 